Hello, this is Mike again from Scratch AI, and welcome to a quick tip on how to use uh, .NET Core or C Sharp development in Visual Studio Code. Uh, now, if you've never heard of any of these things, they probably require a little bit of explanation. First off, let's start with Visual Studio Code. Uh, the name is a bit misleading. It's got absolutely nothing to do with Visual Studio. In fact, it's a lightweight code editor uh, that is cross-platform. So that part is definitely nice. Now, when I say cross-platform, I mean it is available on Windows, unbelievably enough, Linux, as well as OS X. So this is not sharing any code at all with Visual Studio. It's just a completely standalone and lightweight editor. And that's exactly why I'm interested in it right now. Now you see, I love C Sharp as a language and I used to love Visual Studio, but over the years, it's gotten more and more, shall we say, bloated. Uh, so it takes a long time to load. It's unwieldy. It takes up a lot of memory. And when you're just you know, editing code, you know, you're not using it to manage databases or um, synchronize your source repository, etc. You don't need all this extra bloat and you don't need all this extra weight. And that's where Visual Studio Code comes in really cool. It's a great little lightweight editor. Now out of the box, it's all about JavaScript and TypeScript editing. But don't worry, there are great plugins available for this guy, including obviously enough C Sharp, or we wouldn't be having this conversation. Now the C Sharp that you use with Visual Studio Code is is a slightly different beast than C Sharp that you're used to. It's actually .NET Core. Now, .NET Core is probably maybe new to you. It's a branding thing. It's very confusing uh, in a way of what exactly .NET Core is versus what it isn't. But essentially, you could think of it as an open source cross-platform implementation of .NET. Um, it's composed primarily of two pieces, .NET Core CLR. Uh, so this is a different CLR or runtime than the default .NET runtime. This one is completely open source and cross-platform. And so yeah, that is part of the project that make up .NET Core is Core CLR. And then the other part is Core Effects, which is basically the key um, parts of the .NET framework, your file accessing libraries, your networking libraries, etc. Those are all together as a group of libraries called Core Effects, and you can see both of those are available on GitHub. Now, there's a lot more to the .NET uh, and uh, .NET Core projects, and ultimately, what drove this whole thing was ASPX. No, sorry, um, ASP.NET. Uh, so. The .NET Core and the Core CLR is the underlying technology underneath um, the ASP.NET uh, framework now. But that doesn't mean you have to use it for it. Now, what it's especially good for right now is writing cross-platform non-UI based applications. It's very strong in that area. So if you need to write it just a server uh, or a utility or a tool, uh, it'll probably work for you as opposed to the full .NET. Uh, where it's kind of weak right now is there no UI library. So there's no WinForms or WPF as of yet. So, you know, for doing GUI applications, especially if you're doing Windows only, uh, Visual Studio and full.net is probably still the way to go. But if you're hacking out something pl cross-platform, you're going to probably want to try and make it work with .NET Core. So that's what we're looking at today. We're looking at Visual Studio Code, the lightweight editor. Uh, you can see it in action right here. This is Visual Studio Code. Very, very streamlined, simple editor. Very nice to work with, actually. And then we're going to actually install .NET Core to work with it. Now, you can install .NET Core. When you go ahead and get it, there are two options. I don't know if I still have that up. Yeah, so you have two options if you're working on Windows. You can either do it through the Visual Studio installer or standalone. And what I'm doing is the standalone version. Uh, I do have Visual Studio installed, but I want to work completely from the command line and outside of Visual Studio. The entire point behind all of this is to get away from Visual Studio. So I'm using the standalone version. And here's the installer. Um, let's go ahead and click install. It's a pretty, for, pretty straightforward installation process. Um, yeah. So that's it, done. So now Visual Studio Core is installed. You can start doing Visual Studio development as of right now. Uh, now what you're gonna wanna do though, is out of the box, um, Visual Studio Code does not have C Sharp support. So you need to add it. Now fortunately, just hit F1 and then install extension like so, or extend install, sorry. And then you can pick it right here in the list. It's C Sharp support. So you just wanna click that and add it and it's gonna require a restart. And let it restart, and then boom, you now have the ability to support C-sharp code. Now, with Visual Studio Code installed, let's see what we can do. So I'm gonna make a new folder. 
Assuming my installation worked right, I now have a new command called .NET, and we'll create a new one. So what it did is just created a new project in that folder. So if I look in this directory now, you'll see we have a .cs file and a .json file. The .json file is a simple, um, well, JSON configuration. This is your project file. This basically is replacing the CS proj format. So now that we have that done, we're gonna come back here into Visual Studio Code and we'll go open folder and temp, VS Code demo, select the folder. And it's automatically gonna locate that JS, JSON file and know, okay, great, we're the, okay, now this is stupid though. So I already got the .NET CLR file. Okay, that should not have happened. So that might be an error on Visual Studio Code. Basically, it's telling me I don't have the CLI installed yet. Now let me exit everything completely and maybe it was just a matter of... order of... All right, and let it update the things it needs. So basically it's gonna resolve the dependencies it needs. And there's one more thing we need to do from the command line. So in order to create this new guy, we did .NET new. Now the next one is .NET restore. And this command isn't as obvious as you think it is. But what this is basically doing is grabbing the various dependencies that our project has. All right, so now we've got a project ready to go. If you wanna stick 100% to the command line, you can now do .NET restore run and it's actually just compiling our code and as you can see right there it's running it now over here all right my code is apparently out of date so it's there's another thing with visual studio code that's kind of nice is it's got an auto update option so oh sorry i'm not supposed to tap my fingers for me recording bad habit when i'm waiting um, so this is updating to the newest version of visual studio code and they're actually released quite frequently this is a very underdevelopment um, editor all right, so it's now updated, opens back up. So now you can see what those two things did is it brought in all of the various dependencies that your code file had. Now we'll go ahead and open program.cs. And now you can see right in here, we've got you know syntax highlighting. If I come down here in the editor, I can do control plus, you can see it a little bit better. So we've got um, some nice control over the editor itself. Console dot, and here you go. You see you've got um, good auto completion for each thing. It gets the uh, corresponding help. Uh, you can drill down, get more information this way. So it's got all of the stuff you would expect of a modern editor. And we've got over here, we've got debugging options. So I can do things like set a breakpoint. I believe I can do that this way. All right, breakpoint. There, so I can set my breakpoint and I can go ahead and I can debug. And as you'll see, it will run it internally and hits my breakpoint. Oh, these are not supported by hello world. PDB, could not load. I don't know why I didn't get debug there, but I uh, should have. Uh, anyways, so that is pretty much all I'm trying to show you here today. So if you want to get into uh, C-sharp development, just C-sharp, there's this great editor called Visual Studio Code. Now, of course, all of this could have been done in whatever editor you wanted. You notice this entirety on the command line. So, uh, make dir, so to create a new project, this is once your CLI tool, the um, uh, .NET uh, core tools are installed. So then I can go into the folder where you want your project created. To create a new project, it's simply .NET and then new. That will create the JSON and the CS file that you needed. And then you do .NET restore. This will bring in all of the various dependencies you have. And then finally .NET run, and this will run your code. So working together, uh, the Visual Studio Code Editor gives you some really nice features. You know, you've got debugging support, which didn't work really well in this demonstration. You've got um, your code completion, cold folding, um, pretty much the big one I need is IntelliSense, to be honest, but you've got syntax highlighting, etc. So, and you've got your various refactoring tools in here.
Uh, nothing super advanced, but then again, we can also get into the plugins. And let me just show you that very quickly. So Visual Studio Code uh, extensions. There is a marketplace for them. Uh, where did you go? Oh, it's right there. And here is where you get into the extensions that are available for Visual Studio Code. And there are a ton. Ruby development, Cordova tools, uh, a Vim editor setting, if for some reason you want to use Vim shortcuts, uh, C-sharp support, which we just saw, uh, Python, uh, a Chrome debugger, a C++ support, Go support, PowerShell support, and I'm just scraping the surface. So this is definitely one of those editors you should look at using. I used to use Sublime Text a lot, and I used to use Brackets, but Brackets is so godly slow these days that Visual Studio Code is more and more and more often becoming uh, my editor of choice. Plus, I love its command line name. So when you're working from the command line, make sure it's actually configured. Yeah, there you go. You can open it up with code. I love that name. I don't know why. As a command, just running the command code. Uh, and then you can see it here spitting it open in the background. So definitely check out Visual Studio Code. Regardless of, you know, don't be turned off by the Visual Studio name. By no means is this guy bloated. It's really got nothing to do with Visual Studio at all. Uh, at the same time, this is available on all three major development platforms. So don't let the fact that it's Microsoft behind it scare you off either. It is a great, incredibly open source project. And on top of that, there is the .NET Core thing. So if you've always been you know, wary of the propriety-ness of the .NET framework, .NET Core is the answer to that. Now, there are going to be some points of confusion because you are going to occasionally find libraries that are in .NET, but not in .NET Code. Specifically, you've got the UI stuff, but I've seen some other stuff such as uh, uh, I believe it was the random number generator. It just isn't there. Uh, so you're going to run into that a little bit where there's not 100% between the two. Plus, .NET Core has some networking libraries, etc., that are not in .NET. And this is going to be a point of huge confusion for .NET developers going through. I think um, not making them 100% feature compatible between them is a very confusing move by Microsoft. Uh, but hopefully in time, that all sorts itself out. All right, that's totally all I wanted to show you today. I hope I opened your eyes to a very cool editor. And if you are looking for more of a lightweight C-sharp experience, uh, definitely check out .NET Core. Now, another cool thing with Visual Studio Code is it's being made to work with uh, Unity as well. So if you want to do Unity coding development and you don't want to have the bloat of Visual Studio, check out Visual Studio Code. Very cool project. All right, see you all later.